I'm going to show you sales order entry because uh, with using sales order entry, the freight information coming from your shipping software is supposed to stay uh, with your uh, invoice all the way from sales order through invoice history inquiry. We also have added the ability to set the signature required in WorldShip. This will automatically populate that database for you. But please note, since inception, this has become an upcharge from UPS. We also have the availability to auto capture freight on invoice creation. You'll understand that more as I walk through the demo. And we can also auto populate the standard tracking file. We hold the data in our own tables. However, we have added the ability to utilize the standard tracking file within MASS as well. We also have the desired capture, me capture method as by package charge or shipment total. The difference between these two is the shipment total would encompass any handling charges that you add on within your shipping software. The conversion from 405 or older is simply a conversion tool that will bring your old shipping link data forward. We also have the ability under the shipping link notify option to interface with the QVN notification and ship alert notification within UPS and FedEx respectively. We have the option to send two notifications and the available field for mass that it can pull that data from is the email from the customer master file, the primary contact code, or the sales order field. For purposes of demonstration today, we're going to utilize the sales order field. We have a utility here to populate the shipping link table. And as I walk through the demo, you see that our table is populated upon clicking Accept in Sales Order, if that's your option, Invoice, if that's your option, or Shipping Data Entry, if that's your option. Many people import hundreds of orders through EDI, websites, etc. And of course, if you're importing a lot of orders, you don't want to have to open each one and click Accept in order to make it available for your shipping software. So we do have this utility that will automatically uh, update that table for you upon execution. The remove prior versions of shipping link is simply an upgrade tool when coming from earlier versions. And if using the auto capture freight and you're set to populate from the invoice option, you will need to run an, a utility that will capture that freight for you. UPS online tools and registration is a one-time registration with your UPS account information that allows you to interface with the UPS website for tracking purposes, et cetera. So just to show you how the shipping work, shipping link work, we're going to enter a very simple sales order. I'm going to show you some different options as we do this. Our next order is 219. I'm going to utilize Emily. We're going to put in uh, AVE PO as our customer PO. I'm going to set my tariff code at COD because this customer is going to pay on demand. I'm going to set IPS to ground. I've made sure that I confirm to and my email address are populated. And I'm just going to simply select an item code, ship 10 of these, and click accept for my order. As soon as I order has been entered and it's available in UPS imported, I simply turn on my key to import. I type in the order number of two and you can see that it automatically populates with my customer ID company name, attention, shipping address, email address, automatically populated with the ground, my order number, and the customer's PO number. These two fields will print on your label. You can see under options that my quantum view notify has been automatically selected. If I go to it, you can see that the email field has been automatically populated. And in this case, you can also see that the CD field has also automatically been populated and the amount of the order has been filled in for us. We simply go in, we weigh our package, scan it however you normally process. We do not interfere with any normal processes in either software. I'm going to say that this was a five pound package. I'm going to go ahead and process it. Normally a label would print out here. However, I live in a make-believe world. I don't like to waste paper. So I'm just going to print this to the PDF. Instead, it's been shipped in WorldShip. You can see back into mass, our order number. And by clicking this, I have a link. You see that we have the availability of the tracking number, the freight amount, and the weight, and the ship date. From this screen, we can highlight and track. Going to take the iShip website for current steps. 
Of course, a big brown truck didn't actually pull up to my door and scan this package into their system, so we're not going to get data. However, if we were to receive data, it would say on truck at 5 p.m., arrived at warehouse 6 p.m., whatever the current status of the package is. From this window, we'll have the ability to capture. We highlight our line. We capture, and you can see if we go to our totals tab, it automatically populates the weight and freight amount for us. To show a different scenario, we'll with a new order. We'll select our client in. Give it a PO number. We can see that our address is in place. We'll change this to red. And for this client, I've set up a few UDFs so that we're telling it that this is a third-party billing. It's checked on. And this is the client's UPS account number. In this case, it doesn't really matter what I ship, so I'm going to make this a comment line and accept. Again, if I come in here, enter my order number. You see, again, it's brought in all of our information with the UPS account number. It's automatically marked to bill to the third party or receiver, however we set that up. You can see that it's changed my service to next day air. Everything is in there. And again, we can process the shipment as normal. I'm going to come back into my order. You can see that my information is available. To how this can work without utilizing third-party billing, we can select this customer again, give it a new PO. I'm going to cut my address line. I'm going to unclick the third-party billing. And here I'm going to show you another feature of our software. We have validate shipping address in here. So we have our shipping address. This is 300 value. I simply come in, click on this tool, verify address. It connects with the UPS website to do an address verification. And it comes back telling me that this is a valid address. If I change this to an address that I would know is invalid on purpose, we can go ahead and validate that shipping address. And in this case, because it is not a valid address for this particular street and zip code, it's going to give me a list of what the valid addresses are for this area. In this case, I'm going to change it back to a valid address. Is that, is that I'm going to come back. For international addresses as well? It would, I would need to double check on that. However, whatever is available on the UPS website, we're totally interfacing with UPS right there, so it should be. But I'll double check that with our programmers. Uh, international address verification. So again, I'm going to accept this order. If we come in and see that the bill transportation has remained as shipper because I turned off that third party, my freight has changed to ground, everything there is fine. We can go ahead and process this. Now, in this case, I'm going to bring this so in. In the I am shipped, you're going to see that I am not capturing anything. I just want to show you that's there. I'm not capturing it. But if I go into invoice data and give this in the invoice number, put it in my sales order number, you see that number one under tracking has been populated. And again, if your clients are used to this or you're used to using your packing, this is going to take us to the same website. And this is standard math. This is no longer interfacing with our tracking search. And if I go to my totals tab, I'm just going to ship my complete sales order. It might be a bit larger for you. Went to my totals tab. You can see that it automatically populated with the weight and freight. That is because I had the option checked on to automatically populate during invoice creation. We make that an option because some, some companies do not want the actual freight amounts from UPS to be forwarded on to their clients. They may have uh, something that, you know, if you purchase one to five packages, shipping is $10. If you purchase five to 20, shipping is $15 or something to that extent. However, they do like to have the actual freight listed in a table that can be um, reported on via Crystal Reports, Excel Query, et cetera, that can show them their uh, 
their actual freight versus freight charged. So again, that is optional as to your needs. So again, we can basically just accept this. If we walk through MSP, you would see under history inquiry, if a client called and said, I have an invoice for 0063, uh, I haven't written it, can you give me a current status? We come in here and as you can, we can no longer capture because this invoice is now in history. However, we can track from this window, which would make it much easier for your customer service rep to give them a current status of their package with a, a two-click solution. And again, it's usable from invoice data entry, uh, sales order entry, or shipping data entry. And basically, that's our product in a nutshell. It interfaces with FedEx and UPS. We do not, at this time, interface with UPS LTL freight. However, we are looking into that and working with some UPS reps to uh, develop some interfaces. That should be coming along in the future. And it's, a, again, very simple product, very simple, small in a nutshell, to seamlessly pass your data back and forth.